Hey guys, welcome back to the program. To the program. Uh, today we're going to talk about the oldest known stonework in the world that was that had been kept hidden from from mainstream uh, or just any uh, science journalists and archaeologists for a while now, and that's because it belongs to quote the original people of Australia, and that just refers to the what's I guess what's known as the first people to inhabit Australia. I don't know if there are people who came before then, but they claim to be the people who are the direct lineage of the first people to come into Australia in the remote past some time ago. If, if you look into their, uh, their history and their, uh, or their oral history, they say that they, they come from, um, they descend from the Pleiadians and, uh, they're not of this world, and I don't know. I, I'm th that's not what this video is about, but um, anyway, these original people they inhabited the lands in, in this case in northern Australia, they're known as the Jawoin people. And within their nation, there is this incredible uh stonework that also features stone artwork very similar to the ones found in Chauvet Cave in France and um, some of the caves in Spain and they're much they're much old they're 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 older than the Chauvet caves but they might be um, they might have to redate the caves in in France as well so they don't know but the 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 artwork itself is very reminiscent of the ones found in uh, that part of Europe um, and we, we, there's a ton of photos here so this is just one of them and these are pillars that were carved uh, from the stone form, the rock formation by these people. And they have reliable dates as well because they found uh, the uh, charcoal on the ground in the site that dates to 50,000 years ago. So roughly 48,000 BC. Now, May, people may have inhabited th this area long before that, but this is again like Gobekli Tepe. Go, a lot of people suspect Gobekli Tepe is older than the date they give it, but which is nine thousand years old. But the reason why they give it the nine thousand year old date is because uh, they can reliably date the material in and around the site to nine thousand years. But it could have easily uh, been around much longer. If you guys get what I'm saying, so. This place is much older than Stonehenge, Gobekli Tepe, the pyramids of Egypt. Um, there's no evidence found of a stonework like this elsewhere in the world, period. Although it might be out there somewhere. It probably is. Probably in, even in Australia somewhere else. Um, and this artwork is just incredible, guys. It's all over. And there's a ton of images that I, I want to get to. Um, but first, it's located in southwestern Arnhem Land, Australia, which is basically this entire area. If you look at um, this map here, you see at the very uh, northern tip of Af um, Australia, there's there's the main city of Darwin here. But on the no in the middle and toward the eastern part of of central northern Australia, there's um, this place called Arnhem Land and within Arnhem Land there was a bunch of different tribes living here and one of them was the Jawine clan or or tribe and this the site called Nawarla Gabarnmeng I think that's how you say it this is the site right here right smack dab in the middle of this region and as you can see th this is basically where all the stonework was this is where all the people lived and you can see all these different waterways so for sure, this isn't some remote area. There's fresh water. It's very, um, like there's a plateau. There's a lot of vegetation, that, or there was a lot of vegetation. So these people, it makes sense, deep into the Pleistocene, 50,000 or so years ago, these people, it's realistic that these people were living here. So that's not made up. This is not bullshit. This is, there were people living here, and it turns out that they're pretty sophisticated because they're able to, carve and make this shelter and here's some satellite images um, this highlighted area here let me zoom in a little bit so here, here's what they call the courtyard and the, all this is a rock outcrop 
and within it they carved and painted these amazing amazing images and they're and if you notice it's right next to this water source this river so th why do i keep bringing this up it's because it's to dispel the notion that this is all this is natural and none of this was carved by people it it helps dispel that notion because why else would it be close to water like this there more more than likely there are people living here and they know that there are people living here and not only that the people today the elder of the of the clan of the tribe she even she reluctantly um for the longest time the whole tribe didn't uh, reveal any of this stuff to to um the uh, western science scientists they weren't very forthcoming with any of this knowledge but then uh for some reason or another they came out and talked about it and now it's different from france and in the caves in spain because those paintings were just there to be discovered there's no cultural connection there's no uh there's no there's no anthropomocene uh, anthrop anthropocene uh, re a uh, connection to the area so in this case there is there's a, a culture that's alive and well that has preserved their stories and their legends about this this rock formation and this uh, stonework so this is a very unique uh, position we're in as western i guess explorers western scientific thinkers um and people who are trying to demystify uh, some of these different archaeological sites around the world, we're in a unique position now to not only gather physical evidence and physical information, such as, like I said earlier, the charcoal and all of these uh, other um, uh, artworks and, and all this evidence of stonework, but now we have a reference we have someone to talk to about their explanation, what was told and passed on in their uh, tribes right to us. So this is a very, very interesting find that we're only going to keep uh, building upon. And I've mentioned this in a lot of videos. Once we have sort of a, a central point, like a home base of information, for example, we can cross-reference that and cross-examine that with a bunch of other different artwork or correlated uh, sites, especially within Australia. So this is a huge, huge breakthrough, and I can't stress that enough. So uh, let's just continue with um, the article here. So like I said, 50,000 years ago, um, it's an incredible example of engineering a rock shelter not seen elsewhere in this period of time in ancient history. It means a hole in the rock in their language or a valley open from the center, which is a really interesting um, way to put it. And for the longest time, it was a sacred and protected site, so they didn't want to talk about it. They don't want to share this with uh, people for for whatever. For I mean, I would understand. I would, If I was an aboriginal or uh, uh, an original person of Australia, I don't want to protect the site as well just because of history. You know, uh, I wouldn't want out outlanders or um, people not native to the area just coming and going and po possibly destroying the site so um, the elder her name is Margaret Catherine which is a very Western name um, her responsibility was to safeguard this site so um, a lot of the information flows through her um, so in recent years they allowed it to be studied and then there's this video that I'm not going to go over uh, of her talking about it um and why you know some of the stuff that she uh, thinks was um, important about it and uh some information that she imparts and this is back in 2015 and she's an elderly woman so um it, it'd be prudent upon it'd be prudent for some of these archaeologists to get as much information from her as possible um before it's too late and she in the video she she um, confirms that these were created by the skilled hands of their ancestors and and um, that it is indeed as old as uh, they say it is and probably older and again these charcoal deposits uh, at the very bottom layers it's a median age of 49,350 uh, years before present so 
Yeah, that's a that's a really really long time ago, guys. That's this is during this coincides with Neanderthals. This is how old this place is. So th this this is just gonna open up a whole new can of worms, a whole new avenue of of uh, study. I mean, look at this. Like, I don't know if you guys can make this out, but there are some of these paintings up here on the on the on the ceiling. And imagine what that would have looked like in its heyday, not after. Uh, 50,000 years of erosion but man they must have been colorful it must have been a really interesting place of human activity um so going on they say that these ancient engineers may not have required the precise mathematics to build like what like the great pyramid um, but it still involved math and intelligent knowledge of working with stone for a great length of time this is very very important so the fact that they did this 50,000 years ago means that they didn't just start from that point they must have developed these skills over a long period of time and perfected these techniques or or gotten it from some other place someone did the legwork to 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 um, develop these skills and so who know there must be another site very similar to this that involves stone working because they wouldn't just do this on a whim if you guys catch my drift they would do this with pinpoint precision to their utmost ability because again this is a it's not just a, a group of people this is a huge population a huge community that this shelter would would uh help would this would be directly involved in all kinds of different individuals lives at this point in time and who knows who was living among what animals were living among them at the time maybe there were other uh species of human at the time that the, the, the all bets are off at this point there's so many things that could have been going on and it would be interesting to see them go through all the different paintings and what's depicted there they know for sure that there's some extinct fauna that's been depicted in there that's a no-brainer um so this, this would be really interesting to see if they talk about sundaland which is if you don't know at that time during the pleistocene the the water level was a lot uh shallower so a lot lower so uh there's more land so Sundaland was Indonesia, uh, New Guinea, and when Australia was connected, either it was very closely, uh, the distance was, the gap was a lot cl uh, cl uh, smaller to the mainland. So that would be the ideal time for people to uh, come and go uh, freely and, and to Indonesia and up eventually into Asia. So this is, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Well, anyway, let's continue. Um, the shelter was constructed by tunneling into a naturally e eroded cliff face. So it was already, they saw that it was already ero eroding, and then they just chipped away and just, m they just made it into a shelter because it was just so, they just, they, they were able to see it before they actually carved it, right? They, 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 the, whoever the stonemasons were, they saw what the potential of what it could be. And then they went and did it. Um, so the roof is about 1.75 to 2.45 meters above the floor level, supported by 50 pillars created by the natural erosion of fissure lines in the bedrock. So let me get a let me find a good photo of it. So here's the the old ceiling. Now this was a pillar base, and then they, there are some fallen pillars that they found, um, but a lot of the pillars are still up, and you can see here. Um, is that base here and then the D9, D8, these are all pillars that were once standing at, at one point. And then you can see here there's some artwork at the top. And you can see that it's definitely, there's definitely man-made. So this is not just a natural occurrence. I mean, they were chipping away at this and they knew what they were doing and they knew what they wanted to do. So they knew full well what they were getting into. This is no accident. And here's a a depiction of I think this looks like a humanoid figure uh, possibly carrying something here um, and the, here's a view from uh, the sky here's a basin here which in my last video I talked all about basins there's um, they definitely have potential to support 
large population populations and here's a rock outcrop so they the abr the original people saw this and they're like hey this would make a pretty good shelter especially since there were megafauna around at the time i think there was a flightless bird that was terrorizing them i forget the name of it but um it, it's been depicted a lot in there in other artworks of other uh, original people in the area and so these people did have a natural predator so it does make sense that they would seek a shelter to defend against that and boy did they because this is a huge complex and again it's so it's so uh complex yet so ordered. you can see that there's obvious order here that is not just nature this is definitely um a bunch of definitely the handiwork of some uh intelligent being which is most likely a human obviously since we have a cultural connection to this site and it's been kept hidden away for so long and they're all all these are numbered pillars and you can see there's 20 set 30 there's there's well there's 50 pillars but man there might be even more somewhere else um so you guys can see this is uh catherine here you could definitely see that there were people living here for a long time and people were shorter back then so the ceiling seems a little low to us but to them it's just it's fine um here's another here are the accumulated sediments and then the bedrocks at the very bottom so within these sediments they found this charcoal and that's how they got their dates um and that's probably just um i guess the people the earliest trace of people occupying it but it could again it could very well be much older and then here's another um here's another diagram here of uh the site and then there you can see all the rock fall you can you can pause this video and just look at it uh yourself or you can just google it um and then again here's another uh picture of the shelter here here's a diagram and here's the actual photo and you can see no doubt about it this was deliberately uh, this was deliberately uh, carved out so there were fissure lines and natural erosion that they just played off of and they just um, used that to chip away and 36 of the 50 pillars were painted so um, the pr and they also they not only did they carve it out some of the pre-existing pillars were removed some were reshaped some were moved to a new position um, the ceiling slabs were removed and repainted by the ancient people who used the shelter so they were remodeling and, and adjusting not only and throughout the generations so it wasn't just one group that made it for the rest of their uh, uh descendants no, it was these skills were passed down and and people made decisions and moved them accordingly, uh, maybe based on a number of factors off the top of my head, probably weather, climate, uh, uh, food, maybe neighbor, uh, like I said, uh, natural predators or maybe even war. Who knows? There's a lot of reasons why they would do that. Um Maybe it's just part of their culture to, that each generation would uh, uh, move it around and add their contribution, add their uh, painting, their, uh, whatever it is. Uh, that could definitely be uh, a factor as well. Um, so when comparing this to other major uh, world monuments, Gabar Mung, Gabar Mung stands out and clearly needs to be noted for the significant contribution and example the original people of Australia have given to human history. So again, this is 48,000 BC. And you can see these beautiful photos, man. This is definitely a kangaroo, this top right up here. You can definitely see that. Um, and again, this is probably colored. This is, it wasn't, didn't look like this back then. It was, it probably looked like, uh, there were probably a lot of different colors going on and probably even more stuff that, that didn't uh, survive. Uh, possibly and this is what it look like for a little further away so this is definitely a great if you guys have ever been camping like in the back country this is like a, a godsend if it's like raining or whatever this if you have a community of people and there's an, and you're living here you've got a huge serious advantage against a lot of the predators uh they're not going to chase you into here if you have a 
if you're if you have a group of people a large group of people uh, using this as a base so for for a comparison here Stonehenge which is only uh, dated 3100 BC so it's not even a little over 5,000 years old and a lot of people dispute uh, these dates as well um, like I said earlier uh, France and Spain have their own paintings um, and people are trying to suggest new dates for these all the way back to 65,000 years and again if this time period is true if they if they want to date it that far well Neanderthals were living in the area as well um, so th this co this all but closes the book on whether the question whether or not homo sapiens and neanderthals were coexisting they definitely were coexisting there's no there's no dispute about that now i don't think at least from my point of view i mean of course there are going to be people disputed people dispute bones so um but anyway that it's good to talk about this because i don't think a lot of people know about this site it's, it's only been a few years since they came out and and talked about this and when i say they i mean uh the original people uh, these mystifying and intriguing images demonstrate the experience of the Jawain artists, the people and culture still being here today to help tell the stories, what makes the works of art much more alive. Um, and that, yeah, I touched on that earlier. There's a cultural connection that is extant. It's here and we can pick the brain of some of these uh, elders and see what they have to say. Um, and why would they lie? Why would they bullshit? You know, this, they, we can we have a lens of which to look through a cultural lens to of which to look through and and observe this monument um and the many examples found in rock paintings across australia over the past 200 years explains how the original people have been painting since the earliest times in human history uh we don't have anyone to explain chauvet cave to us in france these are sites with no memory no life with gabarn Mung, we are lucky there is a living culture the memories the joan clan can help us build new knowledge base uh the paintings extended up and down 36 remarkable sandstone columns that like the pillars of, the, of a temple appeared to support the cave and here's uh, this is chauvet cave here which depict some some of the motifs are very similar there's all the animals that were around them uh, so they were painting what they could see, what they were observing, and they were probably painting uh, some stuff like the stars and and so, some of that too. They were very uh, the people, the, the original people of Australia were very attuned with the sky, much like a lot of other uh, uh, early uh, uh, our early human ancestors as well. And here's one in Spain that's open. It looks like it's open to the public, and they're looking at it. And again, the, the, we have the same thing going. These ceiling uh, paintings. So, oh yeah, this is another painting, that, uh, the painting of the Europeans first arrival to Australia, which is obviously a lot later. Um, there are over 100,000 rock art sites across Australia. So, so Australia and the people of Australia have a, huge, a long and widespread history of, of this type of rock art. It just so happens that Nawarla is the oldest um, like I said earlier, they contain images of extinct megafauna. Um, the significant example being the giant flightless bird that I mentioned earlier, Gaynornis newtoni, taller than a man and thought to have went extinct on the Australian continent about 45,000 years ago. The ancestors painted and left us a distinctive picture of, of this flightless bird on the wall. And yeah, if they're painting it, then it's obviously of some significance. And this was a, a, a predator and a, a competition to h human beings living in Australia at the time. So it makes sense that they would have not only a, a, a physical depiction of it, but it, it's been transferred through oral tradition. And the only reason why they would do that is because is if it played some sort of significant role in their history. Um, so 
I don't know who says this. I think that one of the scientists says this, but um, he says, I understand that today we have a fairly solid way to calibrate new or raw radiocarbon dates for the most recent 13,000 years of our planet's past, but fragmentary data makes anything over difficult. However, taking into account the significant recordings of history that original people have shown across Australia since ancient times, not all their evidence is necessarily affected by calibration or date adjustment. So basically what he's saying is, if you doubt the radiocarbon dates, which a lot of people do, um, taking the word of the original people is also a very viable way to date these things because again they're not really these people they're not trying to be famous or they're not trying to be bigger it's they're just they just thought it would be a good idea for the other people to know about this site because they're didn't who they're they're not going to be extant for a long time. It's, there's no guarantee they'll, these, this uh, culture will be around much longer, especially with the expansion of Western civilization and cities and the tendency to lose a lot of uh, uh, rich cultural history of people due to urbanization and stuff like that. So maybe this is a very, very... Actually, it definitely is. If you're, if you're an elder... It would be in your best interest to share this knowledge before, especially toward the end of your life, and um, and the the next generations. You can't guarantee again them carrying on this this oral tradition. It's not like ancient times where it was a lot smoother process to to transfer this information. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Where did they get this stone engineering? Uh, uh, techniques um, did they just did they learn it from somewhere else did, did they did, did an alien give it to them an extra or a tra an errant traveler or did another species like Denisova or Neanderthal or or another hominin have uh, these skills and they just copycatted these skills or or uh, maybe their culture was very insulated and so they just developed this over a long period of time and they were their tribe just became known as the stonemasons let me know what you guys think about all of this stuff and i'll see you guys later